Hey everybody, it's me, Ardalis. I just want to show you in this quick video how to troubleshoot a particularly nasty error you might see sometimes in Visual Studio and at the .NET command line and how to figure out what the issue is. So I'm going to give you a little chance to figure out what the problem is and then I'll tell you what, what the actual issue ended up being. So here's the scenario. Uh, you're working with a client, you're working with somebody else, they've got some code, they want you to help out, so they give you the credentials for you to pull down the repo and then look at the code, right? So you do a git clone, put it into a folder and immediately pop in the folder and run .NET build and things just blow up everywhere and you can't figure out why. You open it up in Visual Studio, you try to run, nothing seems to work. All right, now if you haven't run into this before, which I think I have a long time ago, but it's been a while, you might have trouble figuring it out. All right, so here's my app right here that I've pulled down. And before we get into that though, uh, I just remembered we've got a relatively new course available on Nimble Pros called Cl Introduction, Introducing Clean Architecture. And in this course, we're going to show you everything you need to know to get started with clean architecture and how to use my clean architecture solution template, which is available for free on GitHub to get started quickly adding clean architecture to your .NET applications. So it's 99 bucks, but if you use code ARDALIS, A-R-D-A-L-I-S, it's on the screen, then you'll get 20% off. So give that a shot if you're interested in learning clean architecture. Uh, Sarah is an excellent instructor. I pop in a couple times in this course and, and we talk about some of the trade-offs involved and it'll really help you understand when to use clean architecture and how to use clean architecture. All right, let's go back to the video. So here's my structure that I just pulled down. Uh, in this case, I, I, I'm using one that's from a while ago, but it doesn't really matter. And you know, this is what it looks like, all right? so. I'm not going to bother opening it up in Visual Studio. Trust me, it'll blow up there too. But uh, one of the things that I like to do when something is blowing up in Visual Studio is just drop down to the command line and see if .NET works. A lot of the time it does. So it's some weird issue with Visual Studio that you can get around by running a .NET restore, running a .NET build, and seeing if you get some different errors. So of course, that's, that's my first instinct here, right? So we're going to try .NET build and we get a bunch of errors, right? And you know, these are all MSB, whatever, project file cannot be loaded, blah, blah, blah. All right, something is definitely wrong. So if the whole solution isn't working, the next thing I'll usually try is, can I get just one of these simpler projects to work? So we'll jump into the source and here's what's in there. It's just these four projects. We'll go to the core one. This one is really, really small. So it's not doing much at all. So it should work, right? I should be able to do a restore because I know the issue might be some NuGet package that maybe I can't fetch. Maybe I don't have the credentials for, you know, maybe the client is using a private NuGet server and I need to make sure I get that set up and it's not set up. So that's what's breaking everything. Um, but no, I can restore just fine. So we should be able to build, right? I mean, this is super simple. There's nothing here and no, it's not working. All right, it's telling me that this uh, project assets JSON is not found and I should run a restore to get that file. Oh, all right, we just did that. Let's see. Okay, great, restore was good. So we should be able to build, right? No, of course not, right? Well, maybe it's my .NET SDK, right? Because I'm running this rc.net SDK and, and who knows, maybe that's the problem. The client's only using .NET 8, not .NET 9 RC1. So, you know, it could be that. So I can go down a whole rabbit hole trying to figure out my SDKs or whatever, but spoiler alert, that's not the issue. So what the issue is, is on your screen. Where is the problem? No, no, no cheating and looking at the comments because I'm sure somebody's going to post it. Right? But if you get it, feel free to jump in the comments and post it. If you don't like reading white text on black, here's the error. All right? Net SDK, 1004 assets file, blah, 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 JSON, not found. Run restore to find the file. Did you see it yet? Here's the issue right there. If there is a space in your project path, right, in any of the directories in your path, even if it's way, way, way up the stack, right, not where you're looking, right, then you're going to get this type of problem. Now, why did I run into this with a client recently? because Azure DevOps, for whatever reason, will let you have spaces in your repo names. So if someone just copy pastes a Azure repo URL to you for you to use a git clone command on, and they happen to have spaces in their repo, when you clone it by default, it's gonna put it in a folder that has a space in it. And in this case, you know what I did to make this, uh, this demo, I'm not using the client's one, but when I showed you this structure, I intentionally left it a little bit, you know, harder to see. But you'll notice that we're in company percent twenty first app. Percent twenty is an encoded character of a space, and that's what you're going to get when you URL encode the uh, space character. So that's what when we did a git clone, it took the space that was in the URL and it turned it into percent twenty, 
And within different applications, they may treat it literally as percent %20, they may treat it as a space, like you see here in this message right here, where it just renders it as a space, even though it's as a percent %20. In either case, it's not gonna work, right? And so if you want to fix all of these problems, and, and if you do load it in Visual Studio, you're gonna see like, your projects are empty. There's no files in them. Like, what is going on? Right? It's really crazy what the uh, symptoms are for when this happens. And there's there's no way for you to really know unless you look at really carefully the path, right? And if you look in here and you notice that space right there, that's gonna be your clue, all right? So just remember, if you have some weird issues after you get a new project, especially if you just cloned it, and especially if it's coming from Azure DevOps, those are the, the key things to remember, then look for spaces in your repo name that made it into your file system. And then that's gonna be the issue. Now, if you wanna prank your coworkers and they leave their screen unlocked and you happen to go over and rename one of their root folders so it has a space in it, I didn't tell you to do that, right? But that would be really funny and they'd be pulling their hair out for a while, wouldn't they? Of course, while remote now, so it's a little harder to get to their house and do that to them, but you know, just, just keep that in mind. All right, I hope this was helpful. I hope you'll remember this error, whenever you see NetSDK1004 can't load this file, it's not the file that it can't find, it's the path because it doesn't like spaces. All right, keep on improving. Thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe. Take care.